So if you're new to my channel, I love doing a lot of DIY type projects around the house. I've learned a lot over the past couple years, but the one thing that's probably the most challenging and at the same time can be the most rewarding is figuring out what to do with wires and cables. In this video, I'll go over three different styles that I've used along my journey, starting with the easiest and ending on how I've managed to put things behind sheetrock without having to do any drywall repairs after. For this tutorial, I'll be using what is still currently my favorite channels on the market. These are able to perfectly diffuse LED strips that have a density of 60 LEDs per meter, while almost every other product out there, you're going to see individual hotspots, which I personally don't like. And for getting these mounted on the wall, you can certainly use the included clips, but I've had great luck in the past just using some 3M removable wall pads, so that's what I'll be using in this example. Now for the actual LEDs themselves, I'll be using some individually addressable WS2812B strips. These do have the 60 LEDs per meter, which will be perfect for the channels I'm using. Next, I'll be soldering my own 18 gauge silicone wires to the beginning of three different LED strips. I won't go over this process since I already made a soldering for beginners video that goes over these easy couple steps with detailed commentary and close up footage that you can check out if interested. So this first option is going to be for those of you who just don't care. You don't care if you see wires, you don't care if it's not a clean look, and you don't care if it doesn't look professional. This is quick, it's easy, and you're not going to waste any time worrying about cable management. I'll start things out by using the 3M sticky pads like I mentioned before to first attach the 2 meter long diffuser channels to the wall. Next I'll take the LED strip and secure it to the inside of the aluminum profile via the sticky tape backing. Then I'll snap on the milky white diffuser cover and just like that you're all set. This is the absolute bare minimum that you can do to set up some lights, and again, a perfect option for anyone who really doesn't care about visible wires hanging down. Now moving on to option 2, I'm going to again start by hanging up another 2 meter long diffuser channel the same way as before. Then I'll be taking your average cable concealer track like you're seeing here, and even though in this example I'll be using one that's much larger than we need, the same concept can be applied to pretty much any size of these types of products. So what I found works pretty well with these is to take a knife or scissors and cut off a small piece from one of the sides on the bottom track. I'll then go back to the diffuser channel and using either some removable 3M sticky pads or screws, secure the track that we just cut as close to the profile as possible. Here I'll go ahead and install the LED strip into our channel, and once complete I'll pop on the diffuser cover, and then I'll snap and place the top part of the cable track with the wires fed perfectly through the gap that we removed from the side. All you have to do from here is use however many more of the tracks needed to cover up the wires down to the floor. Now this certainly isn't a perfect solution, but unless you want to go through the walls, this is about as good as it's going to get, and since you can buy these in different colors to match your room, it's not a bad option and one that I've used in many of my projects. So let's move on to the third and final option where we want to make things look as clean and professional as possible. The first thing I'm going to do is take the aluminum profile and use a half inch Forstner bit to take a chunk out of the end like I'm doing here. I'll then go back to my wall and use the same half inch bit to drill a hole through the sheetrock. And once that's done, I'll do the same thing but this time at the bottom. So there's a lot of different options and methods to try fishing wires through a wall, but after joining a few forums, this system by Magnapole was the one that seemed to keep getting recommended. Essentially, you have two very strong magnets. This one is the lead, which is 3 quarters of an inch thick, where you'll attach your wires to, and gets inserted behind the wall. And the other one is what you use on the outside to guide things down to where you want. Now they also sell a separate half inch lead, and in hopes of leaving minimal damage to my walls, that's the one I'm going to end up using. Now I went ahead and tied a single strand of extra silicone wire to the end of the half inch magnetic lead which I'll be inserting to the half inch hole that we drilled in the previous step. Then you're going to take the magnetic roller and go up and down until things start to slowly work their way towards the bottom. This might take a little bit of time depending on how thick the insulation is that you're trying to go through, but after a couple minutes I was able to work things down to where I needed it. Once I had things at the bottom, it turned out that the half inch hole didn't provide enough space for me to fish the magnet out, so I did have to make things slightly bigger. I expanded things to about one inch, which allowed me to pull the lead through. I'm sure there would have been some way I could have made it work with a smaller opening, but it was about 1am in the morning when filming this and my mind was pretty much shut down at this point. Since we have the one wire pulled completely through that was attached to our lead, I'll now be using some tape to attach the three wires from our LED strip to the end. I'll then be able to pull everything through the top hole and out the bottom. Now before moving on, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Aura. So this is me signing up for their free 14 day trial and during the setup process one of the many things they do is scan the internet for data brokers that have your personal information. These data brokers then make a fortune selling your information to spammers, scammers, and other entities that want to know more about you. Now Aura was able to find 30 such instances of my personal information being in the hands of these companies. Then with one click, Aura sends out a notice to have my information removed from their systems, which they are legally required to do when asked. They're all in 
all-in-one platform offers antivirus protection, credit monitoring, credit lock, financial transaction alerts, secure VPN, identity protection, parental controls, 24-7 US-based customer service, and much, much more. I'll leave a link in the description for you to start your own free 14-day trial, so please make sure to check them out. Thank you all so much, and now back to the video. Next, I'll be putting up the aluminum profile and making sure that the one end that we cut a small section out lines up with a half inch hole in the wall. This profile is the perfect width and will cover up the gap entirely. Here you can now install the LED strip into the profile and you can begin to see things coming together. And after that's done, go ahead and attach the diffuser cover. Finally, I'll go ahead and put on one of the end caps that the diffuser channels come with and as you can see, there are no visible wires and no visible holes in the wall. So now that things look perfect on top, it's time to turn our attention to the wires at the bottom. I've used these mesh cable wraps before and they'll be perfect for this. I'll cut them down to size and then burn the ends to stop any fraying. I'll then wrap the wires inside for a much more clean appearance. Now a while back I ordered these different size plugs that you can find on Amazon. And since I expanded the hole at the bottom to approximately 1 inch, I'll be using the 1 inch piece like you're seeing here. Then I'll take my quarter inch drill bit to cut a hole directly in the center. I should now be able to slide the mesh through and fit the plug perfectly in the cutout on the wall. Next, I'll be moving on to getting the lights hooked up, and for this I'll be using one of my favorite products from a company called Domestic Automations. They sell these great plug-and-play modules that come pre-installed with WLED and will be perfect for getting things quickly up and running. The first thing you could do to get things set up is to take the connector piece that we cut off the beginning of our lights and strip back the wires. I'll then take three Wego clips and connect them to the wires that we just cut back. Then I'll strip the three wires that go to our LED strip on top and then insert them into the corresponding Wego connectors, making sure the voltage goes to the red wire, ground goes to the white, and data to green. And in case you're wondering how I know which of my three white wires is which, I already marked my voltage with some blue tape, my ground with black tape, and the one with nothing is my data. Once this is done, I can simply insert the two pieces together, plug in my power, and then I'll be ready to go. So that's one way you could get things hooked up, but I did want to go over another option. I'll go ahead and remove the Wego clips, and since this board also has a spring-loaded block system, I can insert the wires directly into this and bypass the connector pieces altogether. My voltage would go on the left, ground in the middle, and data on the right. Now what's great about this is I can also use these terminals to split everything, including the data, in case I wanted to connect all three strips in what's called parallel, meaning that all three of my separate segments that I now have on the wall can be connected to this one controller. For this, I'll first attach three short 18 gauge silicone wires to the block. I'll then use separate 5 slot Wego connectors and put one on each of these short runs. Then from here, it's simply a matter of finding all three voltage wires connected to the LED strips and inserting them into the Wego going to the plus terminal on the block, then doing the same for the ground, and finally the data. And if you are curious to learn more about these boards, feel free to check out a couple videos I already made going over this product in detail and walking you through step by step the setup process as well as going over the motion sensor or push button attachment that you can also incorporate into the controller. So as I'm getting things all connected, you may be wondering what I do to hide the wires here at the bottom, plus the controller, as well as the power supply. And for the most part, there's usually something I can simply hide everything behind so it's out of sight. It might be a chair, a media console, portable fireplace, a plant, or a number of other things. But if you don't have this option, I did make a video on one way you could go about to conceal things in plain sight that will look a hundred times better than just having a mess on the floor. I'll leave a link to that video in the description that you can check out if interested. Now once you have everything set up, you can plug in the power and everything should be good to go. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the less glamorous aspect of the hobby, but when done right, it can really make a difference in the end result. And even though this install was purely done for the sole purpose of this tutorial, I'll leave you with some final videos of everything set up in action and in case this is your first time seeing some of the awesome animations you can achieve with this controller running WLED. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I hope you have a blessed day.